Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How is everybody doing today? It's so nice to see all your smiley faces. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, bringing back the old school way of doing the talk shows. Think Dick Cavett, Mike Douglas, Murph Griffin, Johnny Carson, and some of the legends, and blending in a modern vibe and a modern twist of today with uh, incredible guests from Broadway and Hollywood and television, film, music, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, and so much more. I'm your host, Jim Masters. Uh, I do this work professionally in television and radio and stage as a TV and radio personality, journalist, writer, actor, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist, and so much more. And we created this show as a way to bring people together with some light, love, and levity, or... Levity is what we actually call it, because in the summertime, I was saying the show is all about light, love, and levity, and I said love and levity just a little too fast, and out of my mouth came levity. So what happened? All the viewers around the world jumped in the word, and they said, we love that word, Jim, so we're going to call ourselves part of the levity squad. We're going to call you Mr. Levity. We're going to call this levity hall. And the rest is levity history. Our guests are really amazing, uh, really incredible people that we have an opportunity to chat with. Our viewers, who do call themselves the levities, they come from all around the world. And we toast all of you and we welcome you. If this is your first time checking out our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, we welcome you. We're here in the greater New York area in the United States, between New York and Boston, along the scenic southern New England coast. Pleasure to have you here today. And again, we welcome you from wherever you're watching all around the world. Again, a lot of you like to watch live. A lot of you also like to watch uh, later on and binge watch. You can certainly do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is Gym Masters TV, the channel you're watching right now, Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to click that notification bell as well. So that way there, you never miss any of our daily live episodes of JMS Live. As a matter of fact, I launched this show over a year ago, and we literally have done over 410 episodes live seven days a week. <laughs> Did I actually sign up for that? <laughs> Absolutely, seven days a week, and it's been a true blessing, and it's been truly amazing, and meeting all of you, our wonderful, lovely viewers who are watching literally all around the world. We thank you for being with us, and again, we invite you to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is the one you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. Now, we've got an amazing guest. The guest we have is extraordinary. She is uh, not only beautiful inside and out, she is an extraordinary, talent. She is a Hollywood legend. She is a national, if not international treasure. I'm talking about the incomparable Ruta Lee. And Ruta is actually uh, at her beautiful home in Las Hadas, Mexico, a, a very stunning area. And uh, she is there. She's enjoying some uh, well-deserved time off, although <laughs> she's still doing her thing, talking with us and uh, celebrating life. She has an amazing new book out that everybody has been talking about, and uh, it really is uh, flying off the shelves. You can get it online, of course. It is Consider Your Ass Kissed with Ruta Lee. Yes, it is an incredible book, and of course, it goes over her illustrious career in Hollywood and television and film and stage and so much more. She really is uh, an epic, epic person. And you've seen her in everything. I mean, Seven Brides for, you know, I mean, just think about it. 
the Twilight Zone, High Rollers, even on Match Game. I mean, <laughs> Sergeant 3, you name it, she's been a part of it. She really is Hollywood royalty. This particular photo I absolutely love because this is when she was getting her um, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And uh, really just incredible. Of course, uh, Witness for the Prosecution, you remember that one as well. And, um, and so many others. Just take a look at these shots. These are just a few. That's a beautiful one. Just a few of the shots. There she is, of course, with Frank Sinatra. And um, she has worked with the greats. She is one of the greats. There she is with the one and only Regis Philbin, too. And, of course, she's had uh, a long friendship with somebody uh, that was a television host extraordinaire uh, that I always admired, uh, Alex Trebek. And a long time friendship with Alex, uh, working on high rollers and doing so many other incredible things. She really is, uh, again, an absolute treasure. She is in beautiful Mexico in a very stunning uh, location. I just want to tell you a little bit about her incredible background. I'm sure you know, certainly one of Hollywood's most glamorous ladies, Ruta Lee, is one of the most multifaceted and top-notch civic contributors as well. Uh, born in Montreal, she's the daughter of Lithuanian Taylor. And while at Hollywood High, Lee's career in show business began at the fame Grumman's Chinese Theater as an usherette, then candy girl. And she was quickly promoted to box office cashier and quickly fired. <laughs> but her dancing was better than her math. Aren't we glad? She vowed to return to that famous courtyard years later. Talent and serendipity placed her star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame directly in front of that box office, which she uh, had moved on from. And soon after, she was signed by MGM as the youngest of the seven brides with seven brothers and subsequently in Funny Face with Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn as Tyrone Power's secret love in Witness for prosecu Prosecution and Frank Sinatra's leading lady in Sergeant's Three, just to name a few of the many, many, many films in her credits. Of course, she launched into television with over 2,000 appearances on shows from Perry Mason to Power Rangers to Twilight Zone to Murder, She Wrote, Hogan's Heroes, Love Boat, Roseanne, also co-host of NBC's High Rollers, as I mentioned, with Alex Trebek, a regular on Hollywood Squares with Peter Marshall. She was on Match Game, uh, CBS's Coming of Age, HBO's First in 10, her stints on The Bunny Hunt Show remain some of her favorites. She is just extraordinary. We're going to talk about how she convinced Khrushchev in Russia to release her 90-year-old grandmother from the Soviet Union as well, which is a very moving and very poignant story she's going to share with us. But first, without further ado, don't you just love that shot? She is spunk. She is passion. She's enthusiasm. And as I said, she is a legend and a treasure. Live from Mexico, the one and only Ruta Lee. Ruta, welcome to the show. It's glorious to have you with us. Hola, hola, as we say in Mexico. And may I thank you very much for the most beautiful obituary I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> thank you very much. When the time comes for me to go, would you will, please just repeat all that? I will repeat all of that. <laughs> and I'll have a tear in my eye as I do it. <laughs> hey, do you still have your cup with you? I toast I you. I surely do, Yes, I toast you, my friend. It's, it's so cocktail hour in Mexico. Of course, oh. it's cocktail hour morning, noon, and night here. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying being here very, very much. I don't get here as much as I'd like to. Yeah. But you are all in a beautiful part of the world. But yeah. you have listeners and viewers all over the world as well. So all I can yeah. do is say, I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm proud and honored to be part of your guest repertoire. And uh, so happy to be with you, my dear. Oh, Rhoda, it's an honor and a blessing to have you here. And uh, again, you are just tremendous and everybody loves you. And you're such, you're so, like I was saying throughout when we were putting this all together, because you are in Mexico, um, you are a trooper. You are, you know, a mainstay. You've always been there. You've, wor you've worked so hard. None of this comes easy without the blood, sweat, tears, toil, and the passion. And that's something that is very inspiring for everybody else, Ruta, because you've really made it happen for yourself in one of the most difficult and demanding and unpredictable industries known to man and womankind. So hats well, off to you. you. That's, that's a lovely compliment. And uh, 
I can honestly say uh, proudly, maybe it was stupid, but I didn't sleep my way there. I really did work my way there. And while I never reached superstardom, Jim, I have been a working journeyman, actress, singer, dancer, all of my years, and I've made a very nice living at it. And that's kind of rare and unusual and pretty wonderful, you know, to, to be able to proudly say, I earned every kudo that I ever got and I earned every dollar that I got. Um, yeah. And it's been a great career. I've been surrounded by some of the most beautiful people and I have to apologize about something right off the bat. If anybody's noticing that I have a dark space between my teeth, I'm not the Oki from Finoki. I <laughs> broke a tooth and my dentist would not put anything in until the bone was healed, etc. Mm. So I now whistle very, very well. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you whistle while you work. <laughs> but thank you for the, for the kind words, honey. And oh. you know, our business is a very tough business. I don't think that most people who see movies or television have any idea of how hard the work is. Yeah. Think, oh, you get up and you say a few lines and you go and that's it. Well, not that way. No. You really have to work very hard. You Most do. Most people don't realize that if we're shooting a scene and, and we're shooting you and I talking at a table, there'll be the long shot of the two of us at the table, then there'll be a closer shot of the two of us at the table. Then there will be a medium shot of me talking to you at the table and then vice versa on the other side. Then there'll be a close up of me talking to you and a close up of you talking to me. And all of these shots can sometimes take one, two, sometimes 20 or 30 times. You never know. And you have to keep the same energy and keep up the same hand gesture in the same place so it matches so that the editor can cut from one thing to another without going, uh oh, the hand's in the wrong place for that. I can't use that. It's, it's a very, very difficult and a very precise business. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience on the directors and the lighting designers and the cinematographers and certainly of the actors. How did you get started? What were those early inspirations in your life, Ruta, that pointed you in the direction of wanting to be an extraordinary actress, a, a brilliant entertainer, and the, the sparkle in our lives that you've been? Uh, family, tell us about some of those early inspirations Absolutely for you. Absolutely family, Jim, because I have to thank my mother. And before my mother, I have to thank my kindergarten teacher who came to my mother and said, Mary, your daughter is a little sassier and a little bolder and a little brighter than most of the kids in my, fa in my uh, kindergarten classes. Please, I know you work hard, but put some money together to give her some lessons, either in music or singing or dancing or whatever. And my mother did. Of course, my mother always thought that I was Lithuania's answer to Shirley Temple. Yeah. And while she didn't know anything about stage, which would have been the next step for a Canadian-born, Montreal-born uh, newbie, uh, she did know about movies and Shirley Temple. And so by hook or by crook, she got us to Hollywood not Florida, which would have been closer, not Hollywood, Florida, but the one they, where they made the movies. Yeah. And so I have to thank my mother for seeing to it that I at least had the background and the wherewithal to go ahead and do. And I was never hungry, uh, which in some ways is kind of not so good because when you're hungry, you really work hard. Yeah. But um, I had a very, very strong Lithuanian work ethic. Both my parents were born, raised, married in Lithuania, and then came to Canada because they couldn't get into the U.S. The quotas were closed at that time. So they came into Canada, which was next to where the streets were always paved with gold. And eventually we did move to the United States. And I'm, we're all blessed, of course, to be citizens. And I'm so happy that my mother was able to do that for me. And what really makes me happy 
is that I'm glad that both my parents lived long enough to see me achieve some modicum of success, you know, and take pride in the fact that they did the right thing for their little girl. Isn't that beautiful? And that's so beautifully said and eloquently stated. Uh, the background of the family and the love and the support of the family is so crucial and instrumental. And your paying homage to them is so beautiful as well. And I, I just, you know, I, sometimes we're missing that these days in our in our world. And it's so important, that sense of family, right? Well, I certainly believe that it is. I, I like to think that in some ways, all of us Americans are kind of a very large, very extended family. And there are some wonderful people in our family and there are some terrible jerks in our family, yeah. like there are in every family. And I'm just grateful that, that we can all smile together about things. And the one thing that I've always taken great pride in being an American is that all Americans, at least all Americans that I've had any acquaintanceship with, have a great sense of humor. Yeah. And are able to laugh their way through miseries and joys in the same way. And I, I'm a very strong believer in laughter. I think that it saves all of us uh, from having terrible lives if we can laugh our way through our, our troubles. And I think most Americans can, and I salute us all for that. Absolutely. Beautifully said, Ruta. What would you consider for you um, as one of those first early opportunities in your life where the doors were opening, people were really noticing your extraordinary talent. They're like, oh, we got to bring Ruta in. She's amazing. She gets the job done. And, uh, you know, we love what she brings to the table. What would be that one or two things that really were those pivotal things early for Ruta Lee that really got the doors going and open for you? What I give total thanks and credit for anything that ever happened to me too are the gentlemen that were the, and there were a few ladies, but not very many, but the gentlemen that were the major casting directors in Hollywood. In those days, casting directors held great sway. They went to see all the little theater performances. They watched every new television personality, every new person of, on any television show. They watched everybody who had a, made a, any kind of a move in a movie. And in those days, a casting director would read the part and say to the producer or director, do you want a blonde, a brunette, or a redhead? And one of the three girls would get that role if they wanted it, because the casting director would call you and say, you don't have to read for it. I know what you can do. Would you like this? Are you available such and such a time? That was phenomenal. Yes, at the very beginning, you did have to go in and read if nobody knew who the hell you were. But these days, you can have credits and credentials from here to kingdom come and they'll still ask you to come in and read. And it can be one line, it can be one word. Yeah. And they want you to come in and read and where they're getting the time to do this, I don't know. But then the casting directors are no longer the fabulously well-educated and trained people. They're now, I think, the secretary from down the hall who works for very little money. Yeah. And she knows how to go into the books and look up pictures and try and find, you know. But but I, I really believe that most of my career, I have to thank three or four of the major casting directors. The first one that had me come in for Seven Brides when I had to audition. I didn't have to read, but I had to dance. And I don't know whether it was my great dancing for Michael Kidd, who was the choreographer of Seven Brides, or whether it was my mother on her knees in the church across the way from casting, praying that I got the job, that got me the job, but between the two of us, we made it. Mm. What was it like when you were, you got that call that uh, Seven Brides, well, you were gonna be a part of such an epic, 
epic film is that, uh, Ruta? That must have been uh, a pinch me moment, I would imagine, huh? Well, it, of course it was a pinch me moment. I think I found out very quickly. I think like the next day I knew. Yeah. But nobody, even the studio, didn't know that it was going to be the epic, long-lived film that it is. Yeah. It is, I mean, let's face it, we're now into, what, our fifth generation maybe that's seeing it? Yes. And it still holds up the way it did. The big movie at the time at MGM was, the movie that was being made, that is, was Brigadoon. That's right. Starring the one and only Gene Kelly, Sid Charisse, Van Johnson, and a fabulous cast. And big, big money went into that. All the money went into that. Very little money was left because none of us were big stars other than Jane Powell and Howard Keel. You know, we were getting bookkiss for salaries, 350 a week, I think it was, which to me was huge money. I thought it was sensational. Uh, but that was the movie that, that all the publicity was going into. And when they finally woke up to the fact that they had created something quite wondrous with Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, that's when they started spending a few dollars and sending the girls out on uh, tours all over the United States. And I got part of the U.S. and Canada uh, and publicizing the film. But we were all newcomers to the movies. And uh, so it was a, a rather wondrous experience for all of us to find out that we were in a movie that would live long past any of us. Mm. And, you know, uh, you've worked with some of the most extraordinary as well along the way, including the wonderful Frank Sinatra. What was that like? I know, uh, <laughs> I think I heard you say once that there was, if there was only one regret ever of the fabulous things you've done in this illustrious career as that you didn't run off with him. <laughs> Run off with him? Aren't yeah. you being polite? Have an affair yeah. with him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think I'm the only girl in Hollywood that didn't have an affair with him. I knew I would set up the straight line and you would dive right in. <laughs> uh, I think probably the most fun yeah. I ever had in my career working mm. was doing Sergeant 3 with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, Peter Lawford. Joey Bishop, the Crosby boys. Uh, it was an extremely humorous time. And, and the boys were just like, they were like little kids in high school or college. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They were throwing firecrackers at each other. They were so silly and so wonderful. When they worked, they worked hard. But yeah. the home takes, it was bedlam. And, but it was yeah. a glorious bedlam. And Frank uh. Sinatra... Uh, I think changed many things in my life for the better. You know, he he was a very generous man. He was a very loving man. Uh, I, I'm still close with what remains of his family. You know, yeah. Frank Jr. died very young, and and uh, of course Nancy Senior is now gone. I'm sorry to say, because she was a beautiful woman. Uh, yeah. I never did know. Ava Gardner, who was the big love of Frank's life. Uh, I did know the last wife he had, uh, Barbara, uh, and I never did know um, Mia Farrow. I didn't know her at all. Never, never even met her. Yeah. But uh, Frank was wonderful. I, I can't imagine anybody that knew Frank ever saying an uh, unkind word about him. Yeah. Oh, he'd get, he'd get uh, unhappy and pissed about things very quickly. Uh, and mostly it was people that did not respect a certain kind of decorum or a little bit of privacy. He would get, he was very, very gracious with all of his fans, always would pose for pictures, etc. But if somebody walked up to him when he was trying to put a, forkload of spaghetti into his mouth and take his hand down and say, Frank, 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 say hello to my mother or blah, blah, blah. 
he would get very irritated by yeah. that. But then so would you and so would I and so would any of our listeners. Yes, absolutely right. <laughs> you wrote this amazing book where you share some of these incredible stories. Tell us about the inspiration for Consider Your Ass Kissed. I love that title. <laughs> Isn't it a great title? It's an expression that I use quite often, constantly, in fact, <laughs> because I am so grateful to anybody who has ever done me a kindness in my personal life, in my career, in helping with my family, yeah, and above all, in helping me with my charity, the Thalians. Yes. Debbie Reynolds and I were the head mamas of that for some 55 years. Yes. And and anybody that ever gave me contributions, whether they were $5 or $500,000, I could simply say in true grateful attitude from the bottom of my heart, please consider your heart, your ass kissed. Yeah. And uh, George Pinocchio, who is the... Hollywood reporter for ABC television, the red carpet man, I call him, said to me one day, Ruta, if you ever get around to writing that book, that has to be the title of your book, Consider Your Ass Kissed. And I took him at his word and I said, yep, that's what it's going to be. Now, the book came into existence because another lovely PR man, uh, Barry Rogers, out of uh, Dallas and Fort Worth and well, Texas, uh, said to me one day, you know, you, you come and you do all these radio and, and uh, television shows and you have such wonderful stories to tell about everybody and your experiences. You really should be writing this. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. And a year went by and two years went by and he finally said, you know what I'm going to do, Ruth? I'm going to come out and spend a weekend with you and I'm going to record all your stories. And he did that for several weekends in a row he flew out from texas and recorded what i had to say and that was how my book got to be in print eventually mm. it, uh, it took a long time i i wasn't in any hurry i was not an author i i was not adept at typing as you know from the book i failed typing four times in, <laughs> in school uh but i i could tell a story and uh, what made me very happy about my book that I think everybody else uh, has noticed and comments on is that my voice yeah. has translated from my recordings and the uh, printings to the black and white in the magazine of the print. Yeah. And that, that people sort of hear me. They can, they, my comments are that it's like sitting down and having a cocktail with you and hearing your stories. And that yeah. makes me very, very happy, Jim. Yeah. What was that writing process like for you? Was it therapeutic? Was it cathartic? Were you reliving the moments and the memories again as you were sharing them in the book? Yes, I did share a lot of them. The problem is that I also, in reading the final draft of the book, and there weren't very many drafts. The the editors kind of, well, you, there are a few errors that you will notice as you read the book uh, that didn't get corrected. I don't know why they did that without my sign off, but that's the way it is. I figure it just makes it more of a collector's item, you know, but uh, I found that I thought, oh my, I talked about this, but I didn't mention that, or I didn't talk about so-and-so, or I didn't didn't talk about the crazy experience with uh, Fred Astaire. You know, uh, there were so many things that yeah. didn't get put in the book that I almost feel like I have to do a second. And yeah. of course, you mentioned my calling Khrushchev to, to get my grandmother out of first yes. Siberia and then the Soviet Union, uh, Lithuania, Soviet Lithuania. Uh, I, I feel that one chapter is giving that story short shrift. And I'm thinking that I need to do the longer, more detailed, and more interesting, perhaps, view of what was going on in the Soviet Union and how yeah. people were living and how horrendous anything to do 
with communism is yeah. and how we want no part of it for our yeah. blessed United States or your, your viewers or listeners in Canada or Mexico or anywhere. It's a horrendous way to live. The system sucks, to say the least, and sucks the life out of the people that have to live under it. Tell us about your beloved grandmother who you loved so much uh, and you went through great pains to be able to get her to to come over here. And that's extraordinary. Again, it's just your resilience and your can do, don't give up attitude that you, I was teasing her about before we went live on the air as we were trying to perfect the Wi-Fi in Mexico and everything. You are, you're not somebody who gives in and gives up. you really, when you believe in something and when you love something, you've been known to be right there for the people that matter most. And your grandmother, obviously on that list. Thank you. That is very lovely. And the reason I didn't give up on my Mexican Wi-Fi getting to you is because you are such a gifted young man. There isn't anything you can't do, which is astounding to me. And the fact that you choose to do this kind of wonderful dish with everybody, and that's what it is. It's a little bit of conversation and a little bit of smut and a little bit of joy and a lot of laughter. And, and I admire you and I thank you for taking the time to do this for everybody. And yes, I did love my grandmother. I had never met any of my grandparents. They were all dead, uh, thanks to the communist system in, in Lithuania. My grandfather died en route to Siberia where they were being deported because his legs were frozen on the cattle car that they were being deported on. And when they took off his boots at one of the way stops, the flesh came off with them. He had gangrene and he died. My grandmother didn't even know. She spent 12 years in Siberia. I mean, stop and think, this 90-year-old woman, you know? Uh, un unbelievable, the tortures that those people went through in those gulags. And we have no idea, we in America, of how blessed and grateful we should be for the freedoms that we can have and please let's maintain. But uh, when I finally did get my grandmother out of the Soviet Union, and it wasn't great chutzpah as my Jewish friends call it, not great pizzazz in doing something. I got slightly sloshed after getting a letter from my grandmother who did not learn to read or write. So, so an aunt was writing it for her and she was thanking us for the things we sent her and for making her life a little better and the clothes that we sent her to be laid out in because that was very important to a Lithuanian lady to have nice clothes to be laid out and buried in. And the letter said that she had gone to the doctors and that the doctor told her she was going to die soon to go home and prepare to die. And I didn't know how long it took that letter to get to us that told us this. And of course, many deletions in it because of the censorship. And I went out with friends that night and I was so distressed. My mother, of course, was in a spate of tears. And I was distressed thinking my one remaining grandparent that I'd worked 12 years to try and get out of the Soviet Union and now she's going to die. She may be dead for all I know by the time I got the letter. And the more wine they poured, the more obvious it became that I should do something unheard of, something rare, and that is pick up the damn phone and call Khrushchev. Yeah. He's got to be a man with a heart. He's yeah. got to have feelings for his family, for his children, for his grandparents, for his babushka. Yeah. So in those days, you're too young to know this, Jim, but in those days we had person to person calls. Oh, sure. You yeah. Very expensive double. ones, too. <laughs> yeah. You, you paid double for the call yeah. if you got through to your party. But if you didn't get through to your party, you didn't pay until you did. Right. So I placed a person to person call to Nikita Khrushchev, the Kremlin, Moscow, USSR, and the American operator. I always thought of her as a bitch. 
said, how do you spell crow's chaff? <laughs> well, who knew? <laughs> they have things work. So that still happens today, Ruta, because yes, they ask me how do they, they say how do you spell still on there. Yeah, they stay they say how do you spell masters? And I say, Have you heard of <laughs> have you heard of the golf tournament or the college degree? <laughs> so oh, it still it. happens. It. So then you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well anyway, it took hours and hours and hours. But finally the Russian operator came on after maybe ten back and forths. Mr. Khrushchev no speak it English. You speak it with his interpreter. And she gave me his name and I said, yes, I will. Because I remembered that he was a very attractive young man that traveled with Khrushchev when he was here banging his shoe on the lectern, saying rather rude things to Americans. And my father would laugh because the interpreter would translate it so that it was palatable to our American Victorian ears. And uh, I talked to him and he said, Miss Lee, we're so glad to hear from you. Uh, we see your movies here all the time. We know all about you. Uh, what can I do for you? And I told him that I wanted to come to Lithuania where only, only high placed Communist Party members could possibly go mm. at that time. And I said, not only do I want to come, but I want to bring my mother and father. And you have to understand, had told me, take your parents because they could be detained there by the Soviet as primary citizens of the Soviet Union. And Ruta, they wouldn't keep you because you're American, you know, or, or a Lithuan not, a, not Lithuanian born, but Canadian American. And so I said, God is not going to be that cruel. He said, I want to come. And he said, we'd be happy to have you. Why don't you talk to your congressman about it? And by now I'm beginning to sober up and I'm getting testy. And I said, what the hell does my congressman have to do with traveling in your country? I don't even know if my grandmother is alive. Maybe she's dead. If so, maybe I'll go to her grave site. If she's alive, maybe I'll see her before she dies. Please, I want to go and I want to take my parents. And they hadn't been there in 35 years. And he said, present yourself again to the Soviet embassy in Washington, which I had already called from six o'clock in the morning on. Yeah. And it was nyet, 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 nyet. I talked yeah. to everybody, but no. This time when I called back, I was co connected immediately to the first secretary. And the first secretary happened to be Lithuanian. So it's all in the book, but long story short, 48 hours later, my parents and I were on a Pan Am flight. A little bit of a freeze frame there, live from Mexico. As the sun shines, the grandmother's there in that picture. I think her uh, Wi-Fi locked up there. She and her assistant will check things out as we, well, while they're doing that, Let's look at some of the photos. It's an amazing story too. This is, yeah, there she goes. It's all in the book. We'll have her back in a second. Uh, it's all in the book. Let me show you that book. Consider your as kissed, Ruta Lee. It's really an extraordinary book. She totally opens up about her experiences, her journey, her life story in so many different ways. Let's take a look at some of the amazing photos that we have as well. Look at her there. There's another cool shot. You may remember some of these shows and movies and films, television productions, and so much more. There she is with Fred Astaire. I want to ask her about that. And do you remember the series? I mentioned it in the introduction on NBC, High Rollers. Mm-hmm. 
there she is with Alex Trebek. She was very close with Alex and uh, she talks about him. And hopefully when they uh, come back, she'll tell us about that wonderful friendship she had with Alex. High Rollers was that game show on uh, NBC. Matter of fact, we have a little bit of a clip here. I think we might be able to show that. This is a this is an interesting clip because it was one of the earlier days of when that series was beginning. And oh, here she comes back. There we go. All right. We have a picture of Ruta and Alex up while you guys are uh, moving around. So you know what they're doing? They are trying to find another location because that beautiful spot before we went live on the air, she tried so many different spots there at her beautiful uh, home in Mexico. She lives in California, but right now she's in beautiful Las Hadas, Mexico, taking some time away, well-deserved time, because she's been, she's really been on the circuit with the book, uh, morning, noon, and night. So they're trying to find another location with a Wi-Fi, which is a little funky there. Um, we'll get a better, stronger signal. So while she does that, Take a look at this. This shows Ruta, as I was mentioning, and her spunk and her spirit and her can-do attitude. Um, when they chime back in, we'll try to um, show this again. But this was when Alex Trebek hosted High Rollers and NBC, the game show, which was before Jeopardy. I think they're coming back in now. They're trying to get back in. Here they go. All right. So they're there. They're trying to get things set up. So while they get set up, there's Ruta. I think I see Ruta coming back. Sorry, darling. There Where you are. You? <laughs> <laughs> so right now we just see the top of your uh, nostrils and your eyes. That's it. <laughs> How's that? I tell you, here you I are. Know. Yeah, it's perfect. But I'm just thinking, here you are, you know, television, movie, stage, film, all of this. And you're adjusting your own camera at your home in Mexico. How have things changed? <laughs> on, on, on a telephone, for God's sake. It's like bizarre. So where did I lose you or where did you lose me? Uh, you were talking about your grandmother again and how uh, she actually you know, made it here through your efforts. That's where the cutoff happened. Well, you know, the nice thing is, is that she had wanted all of her life to get to the United States. She loved the idea of America, America. Yeah. And she, when I finally got her here. You know, I want to let you know, as people are listening to this story, they're commenting and they're saying things like, I'm crying listening to the story. Can't oh, wait to lovely. read the book. This is amazing oh, that you got lovely. to see your grandmother. Juanita is watching in South Africa. And she says, amazing story about your grandmother, Tesla Bella in Florida, saying absolutely stunning, beautiful, and so kind. Some of the comments coming in live on our show as well. How lovely to hear that. Thank you. Well, oh. you know... My the pleasure. It does have uh, the, the nice version of it. Uh, but the lovely thing that to me meant so much was that when she got off the plane in the United States, we didn't have jetways then, Jim. We had uh, the stairs, and you came down the stairs. Now, yeah, you came out of the rear of the plane, plane, too, right? The rear of the plane. Down the stairs, hanging onto the banister, you know. Yeah. And she dropped to her knees. Yeah. on the tarmac and she kissed the ground this brings tears to my eyes every time i think about it. this little woman kissing the ground and saying hello america thank god thank god and i think how blessed i was to have this sweet little lady in my life for two years, two months, and two days. And you know, the interesting thing is the Johnny Carson show, the Tonight Show, had sort of followed this adventure like the perils of Pauline. And when I got my, my grandmother to Hollywood and they came out from New York to do the shows out of Hollywood, uh, Johnny asked for me to bring my grandmother to the show. 
yeah. to have her on. And so not only did they help me in many ways to get her out of the Soviet Union because the eyes of the world, you know, were watching, but they also introduced her to America via television and the sweet notes that she got and the little gifts that were sent and, and the prayers that were offered for her, et cetera, were just remarkable and amazing. And then, as I said, two years, two months, and two days later, I was in New York visiting on The Tonight Show. I was doing a play somewhere in your neck of the woods and I got word that my grandmother had died. The producer came to me in the dressing room and said, Ruta, your, your beautiful beloved grandma has passed on. Do you think you can do the show or do you think you should forget about it? And I said, are you kidding? You are the people that helped me get her here. Yeah. You are the people that introduced her to America. You are the people that she is going to say goodbye to through me today. And, and so it was a lovely beginning and an ending for her on the Tonight Show. Yeah, very beautiful. Beautifully said with such passion and emotion and love, Ruta. Uh, again, such an inspiration in so many different ways, so many different ways. And uh, you're just a ray of light in so many different ways as well. Um, and then you were on the Twilight Zone. Oh. <laughs> Talk about a segue. Um, and fabulous. You were so amazing in that episode. There's a shot there from it. Uh, you're not going to mess with her. <laughs> it, it was one of my favorite oh, things to do. Because you, what was it all, like being on set, working with Rod Serling and, and everybody? Rod Serling was the most adorable man. I mean, he was gorgeous, he was gifted, he was talented, but he smoked yeah. constantly. That was the downfall. And of course, yeah. it's what killed him. Yeah. And do you know how that breaks my heart? Yeah. I mean, he, he was somebody that I could have easily had a romance with, but not the way he smoked, because one would be in his mouth and he'd be lighting the next one, God forbid, yeah. to come out, you know. Yeah. But, but he was so gifted and so wonderful. And I adored working with uh, uh, Patrick O'Neill, of course. Oh, he, yes. He played my husband in it. But, you know, let's face it. Bad girls, the tarts, are always more fun to play than good girls. You know, the goody two-shoes uh, are, are not nearly as good as the, the, the hookers with the hearts of golden teeth to match, you know. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, we've got a fantastic photo of you there with the doggy. Look at that shot. Can you see that shot on the screen? Uh, no, I can't see anything. Oh, on screen it's a I'm beautiful shot. And you're holding a leash with a white poodle. And it goes back to the 1950s. Stunning. Really uh -huh. stunning. You oh, know, I wish I had Save yeah. it for me. <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah, we'll uh, send you the link to the entire episode. Um, also, I mentioned, you mentioned actually, um, the wonderful friendship with uh, Debbie Reynolds, of course. And we've oh. got a shot we're showing right now with you looking stunning, Debbie Reynolds and Clint Eastwood, all the three right. of you are together. Yes. Uh, tell us about uh, that wonderful friendship. And like you said, the Thalians, which is an extraordinary organization yeah. um, helping uh, bring awareness to mental health issues and so much more, right? That's, that's again, Thalian, giving back. Yes, the Thalians was one of the first organizations to seriously consider supporting and publicizing mental health problems. Um, it was founded by a group of young Hollywood people. I was not part of the group for the first five years. I joined a little later. And uh, young Hollywood people that got tired of being called, as I put it, hard drinking, pot smoking, sex minded asses that had nothing to contribute. And so they said, you know, we get together and party and sing around the piano. Why don't we put something together, sell a few tickets, raise some money for a good charity? And they sent out Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Dorn. Now you want to talk about talent, stacked, yeah. really stacked. And they came back to the meeting saying, well, all the good diseases have been taken. Yeah. So 
all we could find, and they, thank God they did, was a doctor who was dealing with emotionally disturbed children. Yeah. And he described them as a rotting apple in a barrel. If you didn't take that out and deal with it, then you'd yeah. have the whole barrel rotten and the, mm. the whole community rotten. And so we started dealing with emotionally disturbed children. Then 18 years later, we built the Thalians uh, Health Center, the Community Mental Health Center. And we discovered that mental health was the hidden disease. Nobody wanted to talk about mental health in families or in public. It was always shoved into a black hole somewhere in the closet, you know, mm, and nobody yeah. wanted to deal with it. And we said, you know what, let us deal with the mental health. Yeah. And so we were shining a Hollywood Klieg light, a spotlight on that dark abyss that would be known as mental illness and shining yeah. hopefully a light of healing on it. Yes. And we did that for many, many, many years. And then 55 years later, we Thalians who honored everybody of any note in our business, whether it be in films or off Broadway stage or whatever, we honored somebody very important in our industry of every year and, and their acceptance of the honors filled our seats with lots of lovely people who gave us a lot of money for those seats and thereby contributed mightily to our cause, which was mental health. Yeah. But 55 years later, we woke up to something that was very neglected, and that is the plight of the returning veterans, those gorgeous young people that put their lives on the line for us wherever we send them in this world, Yeah. and who come back and somehow sometimes fall through the cracks, especially when it comes to mental health. So we joined up with Operation Mend at UCLA. They healed the little bit of a Wi-Fi thing there. How's that for a tease? <laughs> She'll be back. She's a trooper. She'll be back. Yeah, sort of frozen. So what we will do is we will pivot while she gets that set up. Again, it's it's the weather, which is very beautiful there. Doesn't that look beautiful? She's in the beautiful area of Las Hadas, Mexico at her home. Um, while they're doing that, it just freezes up. It's just, you know, the Wi-Fi signal is not very strong there. Um, let me show you that clip from High Rollers with Alex Trebek and Ruta Lee. It's sort of funny, but it's sort of surprising what happened as well. But she's a trooper. This is amazing. This is uh, Ruta Lee and Alex Trebek. High Rollers, the game show that was on NBC. Very popular. Now, a game of high stakes. Where every decision is a gamble and every move can be your last. High rollers. Now, here's the man with the action, Alex Trebek. Thank you very much. Happy Fourth. Nice to have you joining us on High Rollers. Let's get right to it. The dice that our players are going to be using to win prizes that are on this board under these nine numbers. Cash, merchandise, great vacations. Our matches are best two games out of three. Whoever wins a match plays the big numbers back here for $10,000 in cash. And now, the lady who rolls the dice, Miss Ruta Lee. Oh! What? <laughs> Ruta, come here, Ruta. July yes. opening. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I was about to ask you, did you bring the sparklers? And the sparklers came in a little fast. You okay? The sparklers came in just you, a little fast today. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you very you much. Are able to go on? I think so. If I keel over, it'll be in a dead faint because it's a happy birthday to Look, America. I, I know they said, you know, do something different for the 4th of July, but <laughs> you're taking it a little too literally. Let's go over to the table. 
<laughs> and here she's coming back. Here they come. Here they come. That was High Rollers. And again, Hi, Ernie, are you still there? Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. I was treating them to a clip from High Rollers with you and Alex Trebek. Oh, really? Which was another. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know where we where we dropped off before, but what I wanted to say is that the Thalians now is supporting Operation Mend, which supports the emotional and well-being of, of our fabulous veterans, girls and boys that are so good. And so I, dear listeners and, and viewers, if you have five dollars or if you have fifty dollars or if you have five hundred or five hundred thousand dollars and you're of a mind to Go to the Thalians, T H A L I A N A dog, and you'll be able to read all about us. And, and if you can contribute anything, consider your ass kissed. I, I, I appreciate it so much. Yeah. And, and of course, <laughs> Alex was one of my, my oh. big supporters. He always sent me money for the Thalians. And uh, I saw him last about five days before he died. And uh, he and his wife and his former wife are all my very dear, dear friends. Oh, there's my sweetheart. Uh, yeah. The cutest guy in the world. Yeah. And without a doubt, one of the funniest, Jim. Nobody realizes what a wickedly wonderful sense of humor he had. Yes. And uh, self-deprecating humor, too. But he, he was not a joke teller, but he was a joke accentuator. He could give you a punchline that would knock your socks off or anything. Yeah. And was absolutely splendid. And I love him. I miss him. I love my husband. I miss him. But all I can do whenever I think of either one of them is to smile, 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 because that's what they brought to my life. Great smiles. And your husband, there's a beautiful shot of you and your husband there. Uh, is it 43 it it was a 43 46 years. years, 46 years. 46, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 46. that's beautiful. And, and, uh, blessed years. I, I don't understand it, but we never had an argument. Let's see, that's amazing. It, he, he, that's he taught beautiful. me something. In fact, I write about this in the book. Yeah. And I think some of your younger listeners might appreciate this. When the first year that I married to him, of course, sensitive about things. Gee, he didn't smile the right way at me. He, he didn't answer my question rapidly enough. He didn't return my phone call quickly enough. And, you know, I'd get a little sulky and, and down in the mouth about it. And he said to me one day, Ruta, tomorrow, is this going to be important? At the end of the week, is it going to be important? At the end of the year, is it going to be important? And if so, knock it off. There's no point in worrying about it. And how right he was. And to the day he left me, we never had crosswords between us. Oh, we might get slamming the door for some reason or other out of, uh, in a fit of such a, such a good man. And he taught me a great lesson and I pass it on to all young brides. Don't get all pissy about stuff. It's not worth it. No, not exactly right. Exactly right. You also had an opportunity to uh, work with Milton Berle and Lucille Ball oh. on an episode <laughs> that involved the dumping of a tossed salad. We actually have a clip of that from uh, the Lucy show and it's hilarious. And Lucy thought you were gonna run off with Milton and cheat on his wife. <laughs> Here is uh, the incredible Lucille Ball and uh, Milton Berle and the extraordinary Ruta Lee from the, the Lucy show. <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> She's, I think we're going to have a, a uh, another. They're, they're trying to get <laughs> that shot. She's in. Uh, she's bowled over. Uh, Milton Burl was bowled over with the tossed salad and, uh, and Ruta who's coming back. There she is. <laughs> I sort of, <laughs> there you are. It's coming in and out a little bit. 
Well, at least uh, Lucy didn't put the toss salad over you, Ruta. She did it over Milton Berle, and that was hilarious. <laughs> Merlin in Canada says, LOL, what a crazy scene. That was great working with them, the huh? On that episode. The United States. And we've got view. Three, star, three stars. This is wonderful. Jane in Sweden, Lucy show. Yeah, her Wi Fi is. Uh, that is a great clip. The Wi Fi is going in and out where she is. We'll, we'll keep trudging forward as we always do. We have another clip here with her bosom buddy, Debbie Reynolds. Oh, here she is. Ruda, you back? Oh, that's beautiful, that shot. Can you hear us? You look great, can you hear us? <laughs> can, you, can you hear us? Yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to figure it out. <laughs> From Hollywood stages and television and movie sets to, uh, the Wi-Fi, the whole thing is crazy. It's a new world now, isn't it? Let me show you the bosom buddies. This is uh, Ruta and Debbie Reynolds performing together, and then we'll have Ruta back there. She and her assistant are working hard because the Wi-Fi is a little funky there where she is in Mexico. Beautiful. That clip from the Lucy show uh, was hilarious, wasn't it? And then earlier we saw High Rollers with uh, Alex Trebek and uh, Ruta. And here's another clip. This is Debbie Reynolds and Ruta Lee doing their thing. Enjoy. A great soul of seven tonight. You are Mr. Wonderful, our bright shining star. Who else but your bosom buddy knows just how sexy you are? I knew Roger when he was single. Dearest of friends, Debbie Reynolds and Ruta Lee performing there. That was so, so nice. That's uh, Bosom Buddies. And let's see, we got a call coming in here. Hello there. <laughs> Maybe moving around to another spot. Uh, you know, we just showed, we showed Bosom Buddies with you and uh, Debbie Reynolds singing together. And that was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, let me put you on speakerphone so you can say that. Hang on. Okay, the Ruta Lee is here, and she's got something to say to our audience here on the Gym Masters Show Live. My darling friends, thank you for taking the time to spend uh, an hour with me and listen to me carry on about Consider Your Ass Kissed, which is my book. However, it's a wonderful expression that I mean from the bottom of my heart to all of you who are smart enough hip enough and savvy enough to listen to my darling gym masters and thank you for letting me come and play with you for a while god bless you all and once again consider your darling asses kiss <laughs> ruda, thank you, Jane. we thank love you, you ruda you. thank you so very much and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon and uh, you enjoy your time your well-deserved time there in beautiful las hottest mexico because you've really been on the circuit doing your thing with the book and so much more. You were at the Hollywood Museum recently for that grand yes. reopening and birthday and happy birthday as well. And Thank uh, you very, very much. And you have my phone number. Yes, we know do. Know where to call me. If you come out to Tinseltown, I'll buy you a glass of wine and we can swap stories. I love it. Well, I'll buy you one, you buy me one, and we'll call it even <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> You're the you best, Ruta. 
We love you very Thank much. You so very, very much with you for your patience above all. Thank oh, you, dear. Absolutely. Consider your ass Bye kissed. Bye-bye now, <laughs> now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye <laughs> How's that for uh, sort of saving the day, huh? Her calling live from Mexico. <laughs> Let me show you another clip here. We do have a couple of clips. We've got some great photos and she is a trooper and she is a real professional. She wanted to wrap it up. When she called, she was relaying to me what to say to all of you. But I said, you know what? Why don't we have her say it? You might've had a little static. If you heard a little static when she was talking, when you take a cell phone and you put it near a microphone, they operate almost on the same audio wavelength. So they sort of combat and create clicking sounds or whatever, but at least you got the gist of what she was saying. Here's another funny segment. Ruta Lee gets a ride. Good Lord, Claire, that's Gailey Yoder. She must have been raped. Has something happened to you, Gailey? Oh, Mrs. Trickle, I need a ride awful bad. More than anything I've ever needed in my whole life. As you know, Gailey, we're good Christian people. We'll be glad to take you anywhere the Lord sends us. It's 200 miles. Now, just a damn minute, ladies. Oh, Gladys, I lied to my husband. He's taken Wyatt to a cockfight. He's got a gun, and I'm, I'm afraid something terrible is going to happen. Gladys is right, Mrs. Yoder. We must all do God's work. You just get in the back with me, Gailey, and tell us all about it. A cockfight is a brutal expression of the devil in the man. By going there, we are doing right, Gailey. We must give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.20. Verse 22 commands us, Gailey. It explains it all if we're just willing to listen. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the <laughs> that is a funny clip, isn't it? Um, also, and again, what a trooper, huh? She called in. She wanted to say and thank me and thank everybody. We did about an hour. We did over an hour with Ruta. And uh, we, what we actually did, I'll give you a little behind the scenes since her book is behind the scenes too. We, um, <laughs> we got together about an hour before we went live to make sure that the signal from Mexico was good. It was solid. And boy, it was funny. She and her assistant, they had to move from this location on the patio to this location, from the laptop to the cell phone to this location. Ruta wanted a beautiful backdrop, of course, of the ocean and the flowers and the palm trees, and she it worked out. But they had to stay they had to stay as close to the building to the house as possible for the Wi-Fi signal coming out of the house to be able to connect with first the laptop, but then the laptop didn't want to really do it. And then uh, the cell phone. So uh, they were going back and forth and it was just really, um, <laughs> it was hilarious. But like I said, she's a trooper. I'm a trooper. She, and when she called in, she was just going to say relay to all of you great thanks and uh, how much she really was looking forward to being on the show. And I'm so glad she was able to come on the show. And uh, I said, you know what, why don't I, why don't I, however we can get her back on the air, even if it's through the cell phone into the microphone, <laughs> it takes, it takes whatever you can do. Hey, I've got another clip. Um, I've got another clip here for you. Let me show you this one. This is when she was on match game Match game with Charles Nelson Riley and Brett Summers, Richard Dawson, and uh, the host, of course, Gene Rayburn. This was in 1973, and uh, you'll enjoy it. Matter of fact, she assists somebody in winning a good deal of money on Match Game. Here's that segment coming up. We'll fire that up. There's Brett Summers. Here is Ruta Lee on Match Game. Of Match Game. Hey, let's take a look at some of the uh, wonderful photos that we have here too. Uh, we've got a bevy of great shots. Of course, we showed this one earlier. This is when uh, she was getting the Hollywood uh, star 
you know, the Walk of Fame star, which is amazing. We showed this shot earlier too. This is from Seven Brides, Seven Brothers, of course. Here she is with Fred Astaire. This is the book, Consider Your as kissed with Ruta Lee. <laughs> and look at this shot here too. Again, we uh, went through the archives and wanted to share some really great memories of Hollywood royalty, Ruta Lee here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Here's another great shot. Look at that, huh? Beautiful shot there too. You remember her in all these different roles. And of course, Regis Philbin, from the Regis Philbin show. This is, of course, before he was on with Kathy Lee uh, with uh, the morning program and then Regis and Kathy Lee. Wonderful story she had about Frank Sinatra, too, wouldn't you say? Mm, very funny, too. This was, of course, the Twilight Zone. If you didn't see that episode, drinking from the certain, the water from the certain fountain, where her husband, played by uh, Patrick O'Neill, uh, felt that uh, by drinking certain kind of water, he was going to get younger and younger and younger and younger. I don't want to tell you too much in case you've never seen that episode of the Twilight Zone, but she was in all these different shows. Here's another great shot. Yeah. Carol Burnett on the left too. And Margaret, Carol Burnett and Margaret and Ruta Lee. Here's another great shot. Look at this. This was the movie, Sergeant's Three, which she talked about as one of her favorite time periods, projects in her entire career. I mean, working with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, Joey Bishop, uh, the lot of the lot, the Rat Pack, huh? Just think about that. Incredible. And uh, she was amazing in that too. And I think we have, uh, yeah, the, I mean, look at everybody in there. Peter Lawford, and you've got Dean Martin in there, and there's Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and so many others. There's another shot from the Twilight Zone. There's that other shot we looked at as well. And there with her grandmother in there too. Wasn't it a beautiful story about her grandmother? Mm. And uh, Funny Face, she was in Funny Face as well. Audrey Hepburn and Fred Astaire. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is Audrey Hepburn on the right in the center with Ruta Lee next to her on the right. That's from the movie Funny Face, which she was brilliant in as well. And she mentioned her husband, of course, uh, who had just passed uh, really not that long ago. And she was mentioning that having lost her husband of 46 years and her beloved dear colleague and friend, Alex Trebek, who we also all miss greatly a brilliant host um just really great memories here and again what a great shot the day that she was getting that very very beautiful honor there's that book again folks consider your ass kissed what a delight what a hoot huh she's a hoot i didn't get a chance to show her this but if you look i think on youtube or maybe if you watch one of the nostalgic channels you can see an episode uh, we couldn't play it because of copyright i wanted to play it and uh, we also wanted to play a clip from uh perry mason because she was on perry mason as well um the other thing a witness for the prosecution there she is there that is another amazing movie Another amazing movie, Rawhide. She was also on Rawhide. There's uh, Clint Eastwood as well. And <laughs> I mean, you name it, television, film, stage, Ruta Lee was in on it. Absolutely. Uh, she was on an episode of, yes, George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> and uh, a really hilarious episode. We were actually looking at a clip of it today. So George Burns, Ruta, when you watch this later and I send you the link, George Burns says his love to you there in Las Hadas, Mexico, while you're enjoying your time off, your little siesta there for, I think you said, you told me it was about a month. Wow. I should have, I should have, I'm double vaccinated so I could go. I should have just packed up the show and we should have done the show at Ruta's. <laughs> Everybody let's pack up and head to Las Hadas and do the Gym Master Show live on location there. Um, We'll have her back too. We'll have her back. Sherry, you're great uh, to say that. So true. So you're such a beautiful and elegant lady. 
Screen Cream Army, who is watching in Northern Ireland. Chris, cool, absolutely. Juanita says, beautiful pictures. Kathy Short says, thanks, Jim, for another terrific show. Yes, and, and Polly Ellen Kilgore, thank you very much for joining us as well. We invite anybody who's watching for the first time or who hasn't had a chance to subscribe to our YouTube channel to join us. Uh, there is our uh, address for the channel. It's the channel you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. We would love it if you subscribe. That really does help our show uh, big time. And uh, don't forget to click the notification bell as well. The notification bell allows you to never miss an episode of our series. Plus, we do surprise pop-up shows too. Uh, we are going to have, I'll show you a couple more photos in just a second. But first, I do want to let you know that tomorrow we're going to have a lot of laughs because comedian Al Ernst is joining us tomorrow. That's going to be amazing. Yes. And then Steph La Rochelle is going to be with us live from Canada. She is an incredible singer and songwriter, and she was in Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway and so much more. She's with us coming up on Thursday here on the Jim Masters Show Live. And I also want to let you know, if you saw the movie with uh, Kevin Spacey and Jack Lemmon, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, oh, if you've never saw that, you should check it out. We have a very special guest who is a popular Los Angeles cardiologist, but also an amazing actor that's been in a plethora of movies over the years, including Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yes, there is Rico. You may remember him from that movie. Uh, he actually is all excited about hopping on the show Friday. He recorded this for us. Hi, I'm Rico Simonini, and I'm just thrilled to be joining you live this Friday, June 11th, on the Gym Masters Live Show. So tune in this Friday, the 11th, 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. for those of you who are out here in sunny California. <laughs> Rico is going to be joining us on Friday. It's going to be amazing. And then on Saturday, we have live from Belgium. Uh, yes, it's going to be incredible. This is Malou Orvois. She's an extraordinary singer songwriter and performer. She's all excited. Matter of fact, she called me today from Belgium, Belgium as we were setting things up for her appearance. And then on um, Saturday, yeah, we have uh, Malou is on Saturday. And then at Saturday night, we have the very popular group October Project that's going to be with us. And then on Sunday at a special time, 3 p.m. Eastern, Malou is going to be with us at 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. The incredible music group from New York, October Project, Saturday night at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And then on Sunday, Adam Weinstock, award-winning, Tony award-winning producer, multiple Tony award-winning producer, Tony nominated producer, and so much more. He owns his own production company, uh, co-owns it. We're going to have him on the show and some other guests that are joining us next week. You know who's joining us? We have the amazing actress and uh, Grammy-nominated singer, the wonderful Eileen Graff. She played the mom on the 80s sitcom, Mr. Belvedere, Monday, coming up. Uh, next Wednesday, Rosalind Kind, sister of Barbara Streisand and also a brilliant entertainer and singer in her own right. She's with us next week. Marion Ross is going to be coming on the show. She played Mrs. Cunningham on Happy Days, <laughs> Mrs. C., and much, much more. Um, she's going to be with us as well. So we got a lot of great guests coming up. But tonight, again, we are celebrating the one and only Ruta Lee on the Gym Masters Show Live. It was such a pleasure to have her here. We will have her back on the show. Jane in Sweden says, looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of comedy tomorrow with Al Ernst. He is very, very funny. Kathleen says, a lot of fun. Such a classy lady. Looks Amazing, so sweet, absolutely. Joan Sandoz says, Jim, thanks. Without your experience, this show would not be possible. Uh, glad I found you. Stay strong. And again, thank you. Thank you as well. Jane says, wow, wow. It's your mom's 70th birthday and 50th wedding anniversary last week, June 3rd. Happy 50 years. Wow. Wow. You get, <laughs> you get less fun. That is funny. Well, happy birthday to your mom. And happy, and happy anniversary uh, as well. 
congratulations. Uh, that is, those are milestones. Happy 70th and happy 50th wedding anniversary uh, from all of us here in the United States and all your lovely friends around the world. Chris, who's watching in Northern Ireland. Christine says, thanks for this special conversation with Ruta. She has a tremendous career in show business with great legends, fascinating stories, terrific video clips, photos, Jim and Ruta for our sunshine tonight. Yes, she was basking in the sunshine tonight, wasn't she? Oh yeah, look at her kicking up her heels in that shot. <laughs> thanks, Christine, watching in North Carolina as well. And thanks to everybody. Kathy Short says... Um, Thanks, Jim, for another terrific show. Juanita says, uh, beautiful pictures. And uh, Ruta is a real trooper, such a wonderful actor in person. Absolutely, I agree, 110%. This was terrific. Uh, this is the show where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation, the Jim Master Show Live. If you missed any of this, so we'd like, what guests we've had, huh? We had John Davidson just a couple of nights ago as well. We had Rob Evan, Broadway star from Rocktopia and Trans Siberian Orchestra and so much more. Um, Ruta Lee tonight. It's just really amazing. And our show continues to grow by leaps and bounds. And you guys just continue to spread the word and tell everybody. And uh, we thank you very much for doing that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share the lovity. Tell everybody about our show, all your friends, family, and colleagues about the Gym Master Show Live. We would love that. Thank you very much as well. You have a great night. You missed part of the show, Dashing Home, but we'll definitely catch it in the archives. Thank you, Maureen. And Kathleen Walker says, thanks, Jim. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. Good night, all you as well. If you did miss any of this episode or any of our episodes of the Gym Master Show Live, and again, we'll have Ruta back too. Uh, she's, a, she's a blessing. And um, it was just so great to have her here live from Mexico as well. Uh, you know, she didn't, she's in Mexico. She's on vacation. She didn't have to necessarily come on now, but um, she's a trooper and she really, really wanted to be on the show. She's watched our show. She's a fan of the Gym Master Show Live, which we appreciate. And um, it was beautiful that, she, you know, while being on vacation, she wanted to make sure she was on our show. That's somebody special. All of our wonderful guests. We thank all of the guests, all of you fabulous people who watch the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We love you very much. Spread the word. Tell everybody about the show. It's a very special place we've created here for all of you. Thank you, Kathleen. I appreciate that. Lovely hugs and kisses to you. That's what you call super chat. Kathleen, you're the best. I really appreciate that. Whenever you see that, that's somebody who's uh, sort of gone the extra mile in support of our series here, all the hard work we do behind the scenes seven days a week. Uh, that really helps. Kathleen, what a beautiful thing to do. That's super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, you're the best. And you're currently in County Donegal for a two-day holiday there in Ireland. You enjoy. Christine Clifton says, thanks, Jim. A really great show. See you tomorrow for laughs. Good night, Jim and all lovelies. You as well. And uh, Paulie Ellen Kilgore says, I'm back tonight, Jim. I first joined you last night for Sharon Garrison. Changed my name from my maiden name. You saw it as P.E. Ware. Ah, I love that. I'm enjoying your so shows so much. Going to go catch up on the others. Oh, boy. Uh, well, put a pot of coffee on. There's about 400 more episodes. <laughs> Because it, it, what's amazing is we've done about 400 episodes plus uh, in just a year's time. There's 365 days a year in a year, and we've done 400 shows plus. Uh, another amazing show. Thanks, Jim. Good night, everyone. You as well. You as well. Jane watching in Sweden says, soon find the bed up again in two hours for work. Good night, old lovities. Thanks for the show, Jim. Good night, Jim. Hug, 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 hug. Wow. Right back at you there in Sweden. Amazing. You guys are the very, very best. Uh, one more time, the vivacious Ruta Lee on the Gym Master Show Live. We loved it. We chatted for about an hour, a little over an hour, which is fantastic. That was uh, a good, good conversation. You're watching the Gym Master Show Live, entertainment lifestyle talk show series with inspiring conversations, great entertainment, amazing guests, live viewer interaction, levity, levity. Tell your friends about us. And again, missed any of the uh, episode or want to watch any of our archived episodes, they're all on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, 24-7, 365. Check it out and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. 
Now, as we always say on this show, we do a little bit of a uh, soft shoe as we exit out. We say, don't forget to smile. Very important to make sure you smile. Ruta certainly does that and has done it for years. You're very welcome, Sherry. And yes, to Ruta. Absolutely. You guys are the best. And thank you, Juanita, as well. Don't forget to smile, gang. And also don't forget to, uh, you know, life can be rough. Life is short. Uh, life is precious. So share the levity and find your Zen place. Ours is, of course, with loving family and friends. I also, I'm a cyclist. Uh, I love tennis, music, writing, uh, and of course, the ocean. Swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing the ocean. And that is the mighty Atlantic you're looking at there off the Northeast coast here in the United States. And of course, my work in television and radio and film and stage throughout the years. Uh, that's another Zen place for me as well. Love every second of that as well. All right, gang, we are going to wrap up. We thank again one more time um, for the love of Ruta Lee and the love of all of you. Um, I know. Remember we had actor Scott Schwartz on the show? He went six hours. Wow. That still tops them all. That still tops them all. <laughs> Sherry Larson, you have a good night. Juanita, you have a good night as well. All right, gang. Thanks for being with us in this fun episode. We had a good time with Ruta Lee, and uh, we had a good time with all of you. We shall see you again soon. We'll be back tomorrow. Al Ernst, comedian and entertainer extraordinaire in Vegas and everywhere else. He is going to be here. And... Um, the melody in the beginning of our show is actually for, it was custom for our show. Um, so the mu I know you love the music. You're, of course, in Sweden. You love the theme song for the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, that is actually a custom theme that was made for the Gym Master Show Live. It's the Gym Master Show uh, theme song. <laughs> we might be actually tweaking it and doing a couple of new things. We're working on some production elements as we go along. I know you're new. So the, the music to our open and our close is new for you and you really enjoy it. So yeah, that's the uh, theme song for the Gym Master Show Live. And uh, I'm glad that you enjoy that. I'm glad that you enjoy that. Um, we worked hard. Uh, we went through a lot of different music selecting that. And it puts you in a good mood. Yes, you love it. Doesn't it put you in a good mood when you hear our theme song to our show? It's not pretentious. It's not braggadocious. Uh, that's not what we're about here on the show. It isn't just about me. It's about you, me, and us and our wonderful guests. That's what I do uh, on this show. You sleep well, too. Um, that's what the Gym Master Show Live is all about. It's about you and me, us, and our wonderful guests and anybody else that joins us along the way. All right. Have a good night. Have a good day. Get some sleep. Stretch those legs. <laughs> And we'll be back tomorrow right here on the Gym Master Show Live. We love you all. Take care. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Now, you got to go to bed, Jane, in Sweden. You need to get to bed because uh, <laughs> you need to get to bed because you got to go to work in like two hours. So have a nice rest, and we'll see all of you tomorrow. Al Ernst, lots of comedy. The world needs more levity. Even Ruta said that. Loves to laugh. She loves comedy. So do I. We'll see you tomorrow on the Gym Master Show Live. Have a good night. We love you all. Bye-bye.